A couple of years ago, I made an Aliens fan short film with a couple of friends. I built a control console for one of the scenes. It turned out quite well, but I received a lot of constructive criticism regarding not doing any weathering. So recently, when I was thinking about how to change the computer setup in my workroom, I decided to build a new desk that looks like an old and beat up spaceship console. With plenty of gadgets and gizmos. And of course, make a video series about it. So hello everybody, this is Volkans, and welcome to my first DIY video in 2023. The current setup must go all together, including monitors, loudspeakers and the desk itself. So I fired up Blender and started to design the new layout. I want three monitors aligned nicely with the desk. Under that, the console part, placed on two larger blocks, one for my PC, and another one mainly just to store stuff. Calculating the geometry, I came to the conclusion that at normal viewing distance, the two side monitors should be rotated by 45 degrees. The idea is to have a separate video about constructing each part. This one is about how I build the wall mount for the monitors. Let's start! My friend Artie suggested a Samsung monitor, and I went with this. It's a 27-inch screen that has a VESA 100 compatible backplate, so it can be wall mount. This was important, but I did not intend to use any ready-made VESA bracket. Instead, I wanted to build my own using MDF board. As the first step, I removed the metal plate from the monitor stand. This is the part that the monitor clicks onto, but this component cannot be fixed directly onto the MDF board for several reasons. There is a second plate built into the stand, and that is the other part that is needed. These two are connected using a single screw that also works as an axis to rotate the monitor. I won't need this functionality. Each of these metal plates will be fixed to an MDF square, about 10 by 10 cm. The metal plate will be fixed with M4 and M3 size screws to this board. I used a large diameter drill to create a blind hole that the large central screw sinks into. The metal plate is not entirely flat, there is a part that is raised. I measured the dimensions so I could engrave the MDF board accordingly. For this I used my Dremel. Next I marked the exact position of the holes. Considering the weight of the monitor, which is less than 4 kg, there is probably no need to drill this many, but it can help to centralize the metal plate on the MDF square. I used 4 and 3 mm bits according to the required screw sizes. The first piece is ready. I inserted and tightened the screws. I checked the result and measured the distance between the back plate and the front of the screen. I wanted to do the mount for the central monitor first, so I continued with drilling blind holes for the nuts. And this is the point where I made one of the mistakes during construction. Actually, several months have passed between the previous two footages. I spent the time working on higher priority projects, like my world map or the free dishes board. I suggest you watch those videos as well. And during that time, I forgot that I need a distancer here, 
just to access the lock mechanism in case that I need to remove the monitor from the mount. So I just glued the MDF bracket to the main horizontal plate. The result was nearly catastrophic. I put the middle monitor into its place to check the dimensions and could not remove it after. There is no video recording about how I reacted, but believe me, it's better this way. Finally, I could solve the problem by drilling a hole into the MDF board through which I could access the lock mechanism with a screwdriver and remove the monitor. I continued with the arms for the side monitors. At this point, they are not assembled yet, as the sides must be cut at 45 degrees angle. I added a few small pieces to make the arms more stable. After cutting and gluing, the arms were basically finished, except for the MDF squares. This monitor type has an external power supply. I designed a small shaft to hold the power supply modules. Here comes mistake number 2, but I only realized that later. To let the screws properly sink in, I had to do some engraving on the arms. Next, I glued the MDF plates onto the arms. This is a bit tricky, but using a few clamps in a clever way, it is possible to fix the parts until the glue hardens. Since you cannot overdo stability, I also fix the place to the arms with screws. So this was the state mentioned earlier, when I wrongly assumed I was almost done. A couple of days later, I finally reached the point where the monitors were all aligned properly. I marked the positions where the arms must be glued. I drilled 6 holes in total for wall mounting. This is probably overkill again, but you wouldn't want to have 3 27 inch monitors destroyed because of using 1 or 2 screws too few. I glued the power supply shelves onto the mount and used wood filler to get a smooth surface, especially on the edges of the MDF boards. And here comes the most favorite activity of all DIYers, sanding. Also in this shot you can observe the distancer that I created for the middle monitor. All good, what we need is just some painting. I chose a multi-purpose acrylic paint in light grey as the base color. Needless to say, you need multiple layers of paint to get a uniform surface. Using an airbrush would probably give a more smooth paint surface, but with my small airbrushes it would take ages. Also, a less perfect paint job will make the overall worn look more believable. All the wall mount holes have been drilled, it's time to install everything. As predicted, just after installing two screws, the whole mount felt stable, so wall fixing is probably at least three times oversized. Now this is something that I haven't spoken about yet. To get the old spaceship console look, I decided to install a fake hydraulic system onto the right arm, as this side will be visible later. And the reason why I haven't mentioned this until now, is that there is another video in production, and that one will explain this part in detail. Hopefully I can finish it within a couple of weeks. But for now, back to the installation. I placed the power supply modules onto the shelves, as these places will be hard to access once the monitors are installed. And here comes realization number two. 
The power supply shelves may interfere with the connectors of the middle monitor. Shock. As it turned out, it was not the connectors that caused the problem, but the back of the monitor itself. I had to cut off the front plate of the power supply shelf for the monitor to fit. Now that's much better. I had no issues with the two side monitors. All up and running. Previously I had one time full HD resolution, now I have three times QHD, which means more than five times more pixels. Yes! And it certainly has that rundown spaceship look. Well, the monitors may need some weathering, but I don't want to do this. At least not during the warranty period. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Until then, as always, happy crafting. Bye!